Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be doing a one-year recap on my 2013 Mercedes-Benz E350, in which I'll be speaking about what I have loved about my car, a few things I wish Mercedes had done differently, what I've had to put into the car, where I've driven it, and answer some questions from my previous video. Without further ado, let's get the video started with the startup of my Mercedes E350. I've owned my car for about a year now, and since that point, I have put on more than 16,000 miles. During those 16,000 miles, I've been on many adventures and road trips, like going to New York City and Philadelphia multiple times. During those road trips, I have cruised through those cities with the utmost confidence and comfort. Additionally, I have taken this car to the Adirondacks in upstate New York during a huge snowstorm, and it was incredibly steady and glued to the road, going up those twisty, roads with several inches of snow on the asphalt. So what I will now be speaking about are things that I love about my car. The first thing I love about my car is its performance in the snow. As I spoke about just before, I took this car to the Adirondacks in a nasty snowstorm and the car was fantastic and rock solid in the snow. Uh, I had an overall very good peace of mind with the car staying planted and it keeping traction. The next thing I'd like to speak about is the fuel mileage. During these 16,000 miles I put on the car, it has averaged a whopping 22 miles a gallon. And I don't exactly always drive it on the highway. Uh, this is great, especially considering this car weighs a whopping 4,000 pounds. Uh, the next thing I love about the car is the storage compartments under the front seats. This is an excellent place to store things, and I find myself using it to store things like change, my wallet, amongst other things. The next thing I love about my car, which I'd like to speak about, is the overall driving feel and how comfortable it is. With my car, I actively seek fun roads to drive on and roads that are more challenging with twisty turns and elevation gain. So I like to experience it. Uh, I've actually had this car on some Mexico back roads and let's just say around 40 to 50 miles an hour uh, going through the turns, it is still rock solid. Uh, in regard to the comfort of this car, it is extremely comfortable with the seats locking you in just right so that you're not squeezed in, but you're not sliding all over the place either. Additionally, the road isolation is great, and combined with the audio system and plush steering wheel, the interior is the place to be. As I have mentioned before, there are a few things I do not like about my car. The first thing I do not like is the location of the climate control. The climate control switches are located towards the bottom of the central control stack. Now, this would not be a problem if the storage and cup holder area were not located right in front of the climate control. If you do have the stuff near the climate control, it is very difficult to adjust it. I just wish the climate control switches were higher. However, what I do like about the climate control is its digital LCD display for the temperature. The second thing I do not like about my car is the fact that when you have the rear seats folded down, the driver and the passenger seats move forward and then move to a near 90 degree angle of recline. After the operation is complete, you can eventually move the driver's seat back to a normal position but the passenger seat is stuck at a near 90 degree angle. So whoever is sitting there won't have a very comfortable ride. Uh, I hope Mercedes fix this in their next generation of E-classes. Since having the car, I've had to get my A service, which was done at my local Mercedes-Benz dealer, in which they did an oil change and various other multi-point inspections. The next thing I had to buy for this car were tires in which I decided to get all four tires replaced. The reason I decided to do so was because the previous tires were going bald and had various gashes to the sides and leaks. I had to replace the air in the tires quite frequently. In my search for the new tires, I decided to compare the previous Continental tires to the Michelin Pilot Sport All-Season Tire 4. The Michelins were rated better for just about every category, from speed to durability, performance and weather, etc. These tires were rated for speeds up to 186 miles an hour. Another thing that sweetened the deal for these tires is the fact that these tires are standard for the majority of the new Corvette C8s 
sold. With the speed rating, however, comes the fact that these tires are very expensive, and with tax, mounting, balancing, etc., came out to around $1,100, which was hard to fathom. The next thing was not necessarily a thing I had to buy, but instead was something I was fearing the car had to have replaced. The concern started when I heard shaking noises slash disturbances coming from my car when I was maneuvering at low speed. These noises and vibrations were coming to from the front of the car, and I figured it could be the motor mounts or the transmission. Upon doing my research, I found that it was none other than the planetary gear carrier and the transfer case of my 7G Tronic transmission. Upon reading this, I started calling around asking for quotes from dealerships and independent European mechanics. The answers in regard to the price were scary, and I had to pick up my jaw off the floor when I was told from the indie mechanic that the transmission would need to be replaced. The Mercedes, Mercedes dealers, on the other hand, stated that the repair could be done to the planetary gear carrier without having to replace the transmission, in which they quoted the repair for the planetary gear at around $3,000. Immediately, I started thinking about what I should do in regards to the issue. A few days after making these calls for pricing, the noise disappeared, and I have not heard it since. It has been around 10 months and 12,000 miles since then, and I hope this issue does not return ever I thank the Lord for this issue going away. I bought this car for less than $20,000 from a Mercedes-Benz dealer. If you go to Mercedes-Benz website and hit pre-owned and certified pre-owned, you can also get a great deal like me. You can filter through other E-classes with your desired mileage, price, features, etc. This is definitely a great system, and I advise purchasing from a Mercedes-Benz dealer. If you are not comfortable or prefer not to buy it from the Mercedes-Benz dealer, that's okay too. You can utilize platforms such as CarGurus uh, and AutoTrader as well. A few of you stated to watch out for things like the rear subframe rust, timing chain issues, etc. In regard to the rear subframe, I like to take the car to a car wash and get an undercarriage wash as soon as possible after the roads are salted and the salt is gone. I do this because I do not want to take any chances in regard to the subframe rusting out. In this section, I'll speak about what my plans are for the future of this car. Now, as much as I have loved this car, I want more power. I'm looking at the E550s and the E63s and thinking, holy cow, if you can get that much power and have the same platform chassis as the E350, I would absolutely love to get one. So many crossroads here. I don't know whether I want to keep my car or want to upgrade. In the event I want to keep my car, I definitely would like to apply window tint. That's something I've never gotten around to and think the window tint could make the car look that much better. Ultimately, I have absolutely loved my 2013 Mercedes-Benz E350 4Matic Sport Package. It has been an absolutely reliable car, which has never let me down. And if I decide to keep it and not upgrade to the E63 or the E550, I hope to keep this car up to 200,000 miles without many major repairs. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you have a great day. Please subscribe and like this video for more content in the future. Thank you very much.